What's up, John? Let's uh, let's talk about your sales process because, well, this is one thing that I've always admired about you and how you run your business, and it was one of the things I think that where we connected when we first started working together was you're so intentional about the system and the sales process that you follow. And er even early on, I noticed that um, how how careful you were with and, and how specific you were about that process. And it's only become more and more refined over time. So why don't you run through that? What is your current sales process at Peach Roofing? Well, I I appreciate those kind words. I, I never feel like it's good enough. And I know that there's a lot of people that do it better than I do. So <clears throat> I'm pretty much just trying to learn from others and uh, do the things that are working for my customers and my sales team. Um, so currently right now, let's just kind of walk through like a, an ideal lead. An ideal lead is somebody who we have um, we have Kathleen answering the phone. That's key number one. Have somebody live answering the phone that understands your business. They need to have pretty strong pre-qualification questions. And these are going to be mostly what you already know, what you already ask. If you just started your business and you're just a one-man show, you're asking the same five to ten questions every single time. You know, like, do you have any leaks? Is this an insurance claim? Do, those types of questions that you make sure the person asking your phone not only knows the questions and asks them every single time, but they're, they have an, I, they have, they know the nuance of like how interacting with customers is important. And we're not, we're not giving free advice on how to roof your house where the goal for that phone call is to pre-qualify and schedule the appointment and make sure that that's a good fit for our company. That's the first part of the sales process. Going, moving backwards into marketing and branding, you, you need to just really focus. That's a whole different topic, but make sure you have wrapped vehicles and really strong, unique branding that helps the sales process. Question right there on that first part where they're coming in. Are you <clears throat> having every new lead? Are you getting on the phone with them to pre-qualify on the before or after they're on your calendar? So um, they can schedule... On our, we used to have a, a calendar link. We used um, Calendly to do that. Uh, we don't do that anymore. We have a form now. Um, we're going to actually shorten the form. The website's going to get uh, slightly adjusted, and we're going to shorten the form. First name, last name, phone number, email, zip code. That's what it's going to be, we think. We think we may do this. We're not sure yet. We may do the full address. But long story short, it's mostly website form. They, they are calling the the actual main number as well. They can text the main number as well. We have a lot of people who work crazy hours or can't talk on the phone while they're at work. And so we're trying to make it so easy for them to find us, to see our reviews and start that process. We're not necessarily scheduling right away. We're sending out. So, okay, here's, here's a good example. If they're using roof quote pro, they're using our, you know, instant roof measurement tool and getting a quote, they're getting the three quotes, good, better, best for using roof quote pro. They're going to get an automation saying, uh, I just got one just a second ago. They're going to email and a text basically saying, thanks for using our ballpark. We actually say in quotes, thanks for getting a ballpark estimate. Look forward to an inspection. And we're, then we're trying to schedule We're um, we're going to schedule that appointment because we want to do a physical inspection no matter what, at some point, they can buy the roof, and we have sold roofs like this where we we sold the roof before we even did the physical inspection because of the simplicity of the roof. We knew there wasn't going to be any crazy things. We talked about multiple layers of shingles, and we talked about rotten decking, and they understood, and we sold the roof. And then we, the first time we ever went there to the actual physical roof was on roof day, and that's totally fine. They Those all turn out well if they're simple roofs. Mm but we're trying to do inspections every time. Um, we want to give the most information up front, the least amount of voice conversations, probably one or two max, almost everything in writing because it just gives a clear picture because we're able to really wow them with not like a sales 
salesmanship. We, we want to introduce our team to that homeowner. So again, going back to branding, make sure your brand is unique. It's different. The color palette is different. You're not using, you're not part of the triangle club. You, you don't have a roof on your logo. Th- those things are important because they need to remember you. Yeah. The marketing really, the branding and marketing really do matter for the sales process because th- if they're getting three quotes or five <coughs> quotes or whatever, they have to remember you. So every single, every single text message and email says like, hey, this is Kathleen with Peach Roofing. Hey, this is Clay with Peach Roofing. Side note, I'll tell a really funny story really fast. This is actually, this is funny. We just sold a roof, a really great roof. We're going to do it in like three weeks. It's, uh, long story short, the customer uh, bought the roof from me, inside salesperson. And immediately rejected Clay, outside salesperson. And all of our automations, all of our text messages, all of our phone conversations were like, hey, this is Clay with Peach Roofing. Hey, this is John with Peach Roofing. It's really funny. This this is an over-communication argument, with, specifically with ProLine and automations in general. Well, I'm just going to annoy my, my customers. No, you're not. This is proof. This is a good example. We just did this. They're not listening to us, and they're not reading our automations. We double communicated with this customer on purpose. We do that on purpose. We have Kathleen's answering the phone, but then we have an inside-outside sales combination of the sales process. So yeah. he literally rejected the outside salesperson and chose the inside salesperson he's never met. Hmm. Sign the contract. Then immediately, I saw in the. It was so funny. I was riding with Clay in his truck, yep. and it and it. I got the signed contract in the same activity feed, and then right under it, he texted Clay, and I could see Clay's text. He goes, "Hey, thanks for coming out." You know the rejection text that you get. Yeah, he sent it to Clay like two minutes after he signed my contract. <laughs> so like, I say all that because it's funny, but you cannot over communicate. If you're doing a good job communicate com- communicating. And we say peach roofing, and he's he he's just humans are busy. They don't really care that much about the roof. They just want to develop some kind of rapport. And I just had a chance to do it, and it's a funny joke that we talk about how I'm better than Clay and Clay, and but Clay has done the same thing to me. Like it's been the same thing. It's just you. That's why you should use the inside outside sales process. Yeah. Because it just increases your impact, and increases your chance of actually making that sale. Yeah. All right. So that's a whole side thing. Well, question on that maybe maybe i missed that Did he legitimately think clay was a different company yes he did oh wow yeah and okay. it literally says clay with peach roofing john with peach roofing wow so it wasn't just that he was like yeah. oh i i, I want to talk to the inside guy nope. no he, he literally thought he was rejecting clay as a separate company yeah wow so, so yeah because people are just not paying attention the, and they why should they they don't care about their roof they just want to be taken care of I mean, this is just a proof that, I mean, and again, if you're watching, listening to this, we're one of the highest price roofing contract. We're like way higher than our competition as far as price goes. They care about the brand and the professionalism and the referrals and the Google reviews. They care about all those things. Right. The guy's never met me. I, I had one conversation with him. He's so super nice. The, the funny thing is like he, Clay's way better than, than me at building rapport with like anyone. Mm. He's just so much better than I am, which is why I work with him. Even with all that rapport, it didn't matter. And I have experienced this myself. When somebody sits me at their kitchen table, we talk for two hours and I don't sell the roof. It just, there's no rhyme or reason. and You have to just, you have to increase your volume of communication with that customer as a company. That's the real answer now because human, this has been happening for years before ProLine was even happening. You just have to make sure that you're the one that's speaking professionally the most to that customer saying, hey, I'm here. I want to do business with you. Time and time again, we sell these roofs and they'll tell us after the roof's done, before the roof starts, hey, you're the most expensive or you're one of the most expensive. They don't care about the price. They just want to. They want to work with somebody who wants to work with them the most. Mm. Obviously, there's outliers, but that's just my experience. Yep. There's such a con. There's such a reputation of contractors from homeowners of contractors 
not giving them a time of day, not showing up to appointments, uh, not responding to their messages. And so a huge, it, it, it just makes you immediately stand out from the crowd if you are a company that is proactively going after mm-hmm. that customer and communicating proactively. It immediately just puts you as, uh, apart from, from every other co- contractor that they're going to talk to. It's absolutely true. They People want to be heard. I know that's like a very common thing. They want to be heard. They want to be seen. They want to be, you know, they want to you to listen to them. These are all just basic human instincts. They want these things as humans. And if you treat each prospect like a human, you have a way higher chance of selling that prospect. Um, so going back to pro- the process, we pre-qualify really well. We want to make sure that we're both good fits. We're interviewing them, and they figure that out quickly. And they, sometimes they'll say, hey, could you not ask that question? We're like, well, that if you're saying that, we're probably not a good fit. Like, how are you going to pay for this? We have three options. We have financing, we have cash, or we have insurance proceeds. And they're like, I don't want to tell you that. Okay, well, probably not a good fit. Yeah. Like, okay. You, if you're not going to be honest with me, I mean, because they still lie. This is this is no surprise to contractors. Homeowners still lie. And so then you've done this job that you think is retail, and you expect to get paid within X amount of time, usually 24 hours of finishing. Yep. And then they're like, well, I've got to wait for my insurance check. And you wait for two months. That's like the age old story. Okay. Well, that's, you know, that's why we don't like to work with those people because they're, they're not a good fit. Or they want you to, you know, cover the deductible at the end of the job, which has happened so much to us. We're like, no, we our, our contract's not with the insurance company. It's with you and this for this amount of money. Anyway. Yep. So pre qualification is really important for us. I know we lose opportunities, I know that our sales are lower revenue is lower. I know it is because we do this. We so, such an intense, but guess what? I don't have to do jobs or I lose money or I don't, I make $500 on, I don't do those. I just don't do them. Um, yeah. it, it's better. It's not good for anyone to do those jobs. We fix those roofs all the time. We're literally looking at a roof right now. It's like two years old. It's leaking in five places. Mm. I'm like, okay, well you just went for the lowest person. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And we're telling them that we have this conversation so much where we're like, I don't know what to tell you. The shingles are, and we're showing them like the nail line. We're like, hey, see this this nail? See where this hole is? It's too high. It's too high. It's too high. And this is why this brand new shingle has slipped off your roof. Yep. Um, so anyway, pre-qualification. Then we have the inside-outside part. So we're trying to inspect. Outside salespeople go out. They do... Uh, either drone or they climb on the roof and we're doing, we don't have a quantity necessarily because diff- every roof is a size, but um, it's usually between 40 and 50 um, company cam photos for the inspection report. We send the company cam photos to the customer to give them value right away. Free value. You, there's your roof. You've never seen this. Here's a problem. Here's a solution. We have annotated. it. So it's even better because Kathleen's really good about as they're taking the pictures. She knows. She sees all the everyone's schedule. So she can see as the photos are getting uploaded to company cam, she's making annotations. Sometimes it's a salesperson. Sometimes it's her. Sometimes it's both. But we're giving real value, real time. We're not wasting the outside. Like those guys want to be, you know, they're carrying their ladder. They're climbing on roofs. They're flying a drone. They're getting in and out of their truck. All those things that are physical. It's hot. Everything. We're trying to reduce all the paperwork as much as possible. Any type of software touching. Kathleen is the one that's tr- we're trying to get that done. And even uh, right now, it's me, inside salesperson. Um, that's the next person we're going to hire is inside salesperson. They're, they're going to be the ones that's like actively watching the schedule. And they're doing all those annotations to company cam inspection photos. They're trying to have the proposal ready we're trying to have the if we pre-qualify correctly we have all the measurements so the measurements are there we have pro line proposal already like 90 percent done because it's all super fast and pro line and so when we're there all we're doing is adding the inspection photos we're annotating those in pro line the proposal should be done if if we're meeting the customer in in real life which is kind of rare now it's very rare that we we don't require them to be home and that's fine 
we're just going to do a really strong follow-up and proposal, either a Loom video or a Zoom video, or we're going to walk them through on the phone um, their proposal. We just want it. We want it done faster. That's what we've we've noticed that for since 2019, and we, nobody wants to replace their roof. But when they make that decision, they want it done that day, that minute. They don't want to get the estimates. They don't want to like make a decision. They want to be educated. They want to they want to know I'm getting a good job. This is the value that I'm getting. I'm getting this warranty. I'm getting this material. I can trust these guys to install correctly. All right, I've, I made the decision. Great. I want it done right now. So we always try to be like two weeks out or less. We have multiple crews now, so that will always happen unless it rains every single day. So faster actually is better, and ProLine makes that easier because you've just had all this rapport leading up to the like the, the inspection and the sales process, the, the proposal. You presented the proposal. They're like they're ready. They're like on the, the edge of the cliff ready to make the decision. So if you've done all these touches, if you've done, you know, we're talking minimum is seven. This is what our goal is, seven, some sort of seven touches of, of some sort of communication. But it's usually way more than that. Leading up, that we want them to know at least the person. If secondary would be the company, Peach Roofing, great. So if they have at least in the back of their mind okay i like this person they keep talking to me they're the only ones that have done that the proposal very nice they're gonna do a good job the warranty is amazing all this stuff man they're one of the highest price ones but they give me three options i really want that middle option because it's got scotch guard i like that okay so once we were there you strike while the iron is hot we're not pushy but we are going to ask for the sale hey do you want to be put on the schedule we're about seven to ten days out that your job will take a day, maybe a day and a half, depending on rotten decking. They say yes or no. Then we, that's when we start. We I actually have increased the the frequency of our uh, um, automations for text. So we're doing it like every day. And people are like, that's too much. It's not too much. It's not too much to do that. Sales. Is, are you alternating between the inside and outside for that? No. Those other no. I just do inside. Wow. Yeah. Um, we could no, actually, uh, I'd have to look at that actually now. It may be double up actually right at this moment, which I don't care if it's <laughs> both. That's great. I tell I tell them all the time. I was, I was like, guys, if you call them in the morning and then you text them, they didn't respond. Do it again in the afternoon. Well, yeah. that's too much. No, it's not. They're busy in the morning. They then they go to lunch and they get home and they got their kids for soccer practice, whatever. Do it again. Yeah, they're not going to even be mad at you because they. Uh, if they if, if they didn't respond, they probably didn't, didn't see it. Yeah, if they didn't respond, they're like, I gotta I gotta respond to this roofer and they just don't do it. You do it again, they're like, Oh crap. I'm I'm so sorry. They're texting us, they're sorry. I, I don't know why people don't understand that. Like yeah. that is like the core of why we built ProLine because we need that much communication. We are too busy as a culture. So I gotta pick a roofer. Whoever reaches out the most wins. Yeah. That's more often than not, way more often. If they they're not a good fit, if they were expecting ten thousand and it's twenty thousand, and they've got somebody doing it for twelve and we're at nineteen, it doesn't matter then. Doesn't it, matter then. Just, yeah, there's not a good fit. But we have definitely overcome that a lot. Really? Yeah, because people are still like, "Wow, that's a mistake." Because they get three quotes, we'll be at nineteen. The next person will be eighteen five, and then the one person's at twelve. Well, if they've chosen the twelve thousand person, we definitely did not want to work with them. Yeah, because they do not have realistic expectations of what it's supposed to be. Why? It's 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 a foolish thing as a homeowner to choose that. I don't care what kind of service it is. You get another quote, it'll be seventeen or eighteen or nineteen. Yeah. Why are they all the same price? Because they're doing the right thing. They they have the right crews, the right material. They they know how to install this roof correctly. They're gonna stand behind it. The person yeah. doing twelve is not. You're not winning. You're losing. Yeah. Because your roof's gonna leak. Yeah, you're just burning that money. It yeah. may be less money, but you're burning it. Oh yeah, you're gonna spend more. Yeah, yep. No, that makes sense. I think I think one way of looking at part of sales, at least, is you're you're providing reminders as a service. Mm -hmm. Like you're that's that's part of your role. Like the, part of the value of a salesperson and a sales process for a company to that consumer 
is helping them to make that decision. I like that. And so it's like, it, it is, it's not, rather than thinking about it like, oh, I don't want to bother them. That's a, comp- you, you're, you're kind of, you framed yourself as a bother to your customer mm-hmm. instead of realizing like, oh no, the customer needs to make a decision. They want to make a decision when it comes to their roof, but they're procrastinating because it's a normal human thing to do. And so part of, you know, part of your role as, as a sales organization is to help them to fa- help facilitate them making that decision. Yep. And the, and the good customers, like you're saying, they recognize that. So they're then responding back. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Here's like, let's, let's do this. Yep. You have a chance at that point too. Like, especially if you over overly communicate, if they have an objection and they're like, and then they probably do because they're expecting it to be less money because it's so expensive now. You have an opportunity then to text them back, to be like, "Hey, yeah, this is the reason why. Why are you so much? Why? Are, why are whatever the objection is? Yeah. You have an opportunity to at least stay in the fight. You don't if you don't communicate. And I know that there's definitely sales fear, or just move to the next one. They didn't say yes right away. Okay. Well, we sold tons of roofs months later because guess what? People are not willing to use our financing. They're not. They're just not. It's fine. I'm not gonna. Whatever you want to do, however you want to pay for the roof, it's that's not my. I, I'm gonna try to help you. Like I gotta get finances together. I gotta get a tax return. Whatever it is, I gotta get through this tax season to pay taxes. Whatever that reason is, if you don't keep following up, you don't have the opportunity because they have forgotten about you. Some of my really good friends still call our name wrong. Like they <laughs> they just don't remember. Like they don't think about peach roofing. Like we we think about it every single day. I dream about it. Like they don't, they don't do that. They got other stuff to do. So you've just got to stay on top of that communication. Like it just help snowball your business, snowball the sales because it is very frustrating right now because it's September and we have all these people in the quote sent pipeline and we can, it's so frustrating because we can't close them. Mm-hmm. I know statistically we're going to close X percentage of those over the next six months. It's annoying that it's going to take six months, but we're going to close them because we're going to continue to follow up. ProLine actually is. Mm. So it's, uh, and then we'll do manual, if, if just, you know, from our sales process, we do actually try to do it every Friday. We try to do, um, and it's, it's there's there's nuance there because you have to know each prospect and understand like, okay, well they, they said they were making a decision in October, so don't call them every Friday. Right. Um, you need to listen to your customer. If they say we're not doing anything until October, don't do, don't call. The, you're not going to get the sale then. <laughs> like, listen to people. Right. But yeah, we're still doing manual follow up. We're still calling voicemail, text, and email. And then, based on those responses or lack of responses, we will change the automation wording or well, the frequency. Move it up, move it back, whatever it is. And once you've done it, it's a very, you're counting seconds at that point. If you get a lot of leads, a lot of prospects, you can't be spending five minutes on each one. You you have to do it in seconds so that you're just able to pop, 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 pop through. Otherwise, you're spending the entire day following up and nobody wants to do that. No, They don't want to do it in the first place. Yeah. But use the simplicity of, of ProLine's automations, change it, and it's done. Click. You click on new date. Doom. It's done. You know it's done. You listen to the customer. They heard you. You talked about they talked about their surgery or their kids' soccer game or whatever their their trip they're coming back from. Hey, hope Italy was great. Boom, done. And you are guaranteeing that you're gonna never forget, or you guarantee that you can forget, and it's always gonna get sent out. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a huge. I it still kind of shocks me every time I hear of another platform that doesn't have that because it seems so straightforward of a need to be able to. Oh, yeah to reschedule things and re rewrite upcoming automations and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Cause it's so, it's so critical. It's like, that's, that's the, the, the flip side of it is when you do have that customer that is very intentional about when the next time they want to be reminded is honor, like respecting that, that's where it's very important. Yep. And I think that's, I think that's where a lot of people were like, Oh, I don't want automations. They're thinking that, automations means disrespecting yes. the customer's wishes and it 
with some platforms maybe but not with proline because proline's set up so that you can honor their wishes and respect their wishes when it comes to the timelines when when you're following up yep. with them all of that and you should have something in your sales process or script that says something like hey totally understand you're going to take some time for this whatever the objection is after you've gone over a couple of objections just so i'm persistent and not a pest when would be a good time to follow up you need to have something like that in your to prompt that to prompt it so that you're yeah. like i want to be respectful you can even say i've said this before hey my system's going to remind me to call you i just don't want to upset you is it are we talking about next friday or are we talking about a couple weeks after that mm. and then you just you just tell them oh next friday's fine yeah and then automations go friday yeah boom and and when that happens now they're like Oh, he said he was going to do it, and then he did it. And how many freaking times have they said, you you actually did it? They've told me. They've texted me back, or they've called me back, and like, you said Friday, and you called on Friday, and we've sold the job because mm. you did what you said you're going to do. Yep. Proline did. Yep. It's, it's, it's a good – Proline does what humans are supposed to do, salespeople. Like, it just it just guarantees that process if you're using it correctly. Right. Like you should have a lot of tools in your tool belt for how to sell jobs and you should be, you should care about people so that you can actually build rapport. And there's things that are a uh, technology is not going to be able to do, but it at least does a core value, which is do what you say you're going to do. I'm going to follow up. Even if I'm in the hospital, if you're going to follow up, whatever it is, whatever life happens, you're going to be able to, communicate with that customer and let them know you you did what you said you're going to do yep i love that so um so we're, we're talking about the sales so let's talk about like when we're talking about your sales process do you do you consider that to be over when the quote gets signed or does it extend beyond that so the sales process is over then it comes into customer experience production time it's really important that there's more automations. That's a whole into like that's another half hour of talking about how we want to make sure production is, is is more tricky. There's things that you can do to automate to make sure that, that you're communicating. Again, going to things like, hey, we ordered your material. Hey, we scheduled the crew. Uh, there's a lot of things that a lot of contractors use Proline with to send out automated messages, but that definitely is nuanced because of weather and because of your just production. Um, efficiency, like you may not finish the job the day before, or whatever the whatever the reason is. Yep, production's a little harder to automate, but you still can send. That. Customers have never been stop texting me that you ordered my material. <laughs> never have, and they will never say that. If they do, they're ta like it's crazy. Yeah, they want to know. All right, especially if they've paid a deposit, I'm getting what I paid for now, and that's an excellent customer experience and that generally means really really just clear communication about i promise we're working just because you signed the contract we're still working right now and that's mm -hmm. all that is is just making sure that you're sending out communications for each part of the process like tentatively on next thursday weather permitting there's a lot of things that we send out that are um like copy paste note like we have that it makes it easy for production management to, to actually send um that's definitely outside of the sales you're not really selling anything you're you're trying to maintain profitability maximize profitability and um get the five-star review because of your excellent customer experience that's the goal right then that's the move that's a it's the handoff it's the it's the shift in that customer journey from sales convincing that hey we are a good fit for you you should choose us They've chosen us. They've signed the contract. Um, oh, one thing I do love about just uh, like automated deposit invoices, just like you I, guys are using those now. I I um I have harped over and over again about how minutes matter on this with my team. Like, what? That doesn't matter. I'm like, yes, it does. If it's four thirty on a Friday, you need to get the invoice there like that minute. Right. If they have signed off that the job is done, you don't want to wait until the next Tuesday to get paid. Right. Super important. And also, if your yeah. merchant processing is slower, then you got to wait. Then your crew has to wait. Then the supplier, you gotta, you're backing up. Everything gets back. Yes. Up. So yeah. 
like having automated invoicing for deposits is really helpful. Um, we're going to actually improve the final invoice part of it's just, we need to do it for our process to try to make sure that that happens really fast in ProLine for the final invoice. We don't want to automate that all the way, but we want to have like a pretty clear sign off from the customer. So it, we don't have to wait for um, another backend office person to, to send out the invoice. We want it done like really fast, especially if we have change orders, it's already mm -hmm. easy, but that matters. Sending out invoices fast is really important. Yep. If they're happy, they're telling you they're happy. You, they're at, they're saying they're gonna write a five star review. Send the invoice that minute. Yeah, get it to them quickly. Like it's the one part of it that you can you have full control over yep. when it comes to the timeline of getting paid. Yep. Very true. So that's you know that's a whole kind of generalized part of our sales process, but. We don't follow a specific method. There are there are scripts that we have that we talk about. Um, there are we definitely do like leave behind stuff with our manufacturer. I try to stay away from all the manufacturer stuff and just focus on peach roofing, not necessarily our product. I don't think that was always the case. Was there what led to that decision? I just think you confused. You're, you're adding more information. I just I want to sell the brand. It's and I'm realizing it's more about. I know that it's people selling people. I understand that part, but um, I think if you introduce another um, variable, another question, you just a whole another line of questions happen. Mm. Why do you do this? Why do you do? Why do you choose this? Well, what about this? Okay, well we already explained that, but we just talk about another whole entity, which is a brand of shingles. It it does not give a customer like the peace of mind. They need to just trust us. We're gonna. We care about what we install. We do. Mm -hmm. I want that to be the end of it, from a product perspective. Mm -hmm. And like, how you install it. That's a whole. You know, there's. When you introduce a lot of things like that, a lot of. I'm. We're fine answering those questions. We do it all the time. But you really just need to, to trust you as a salesperson and as an actual company. That's what you want to, to focus on. That, not everything else that goes along. There's. There's so much um, unspoken things. I talked about this with Clay this morning, actually. On I was like, I'm going to sell you right now, Clay. I'm going to talk about why people should use us. And I talked about all the reasons. I was like, there's this guy that we just started using. He's a great installer. He really cares. These are three things that I did when I was, because Clay was on vacation, so I managed his job. I managed Clay's sole job. And so I was on the roof, and I just did some things that are, that are, impossible to communicate every single time for a new customer. But I make our crews better because of my knowledge and my actual genuine care for those crew, for those crew members. Like I care about them. I care about them getting paid. I care about that customer not having leaks. And there are just some details that were technical. There's like, Hey, it's impossible for me to tell you every single homeowner of these things. There's like 50 things that I could tell them that it's too much. You just got to say, hey, I just need you to trust me. I'm going to take care of you. And that's that's where I, if anyone talks about sales, there's definitely emotional and mental manipulation that works and you can make sales. There's a th thousand percent. There's so much better salespeople than me. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I want that customer to trust me for who I am as a salesperson and what my guys as salespeople are and the reputation that we care. Like we care. Um, it's really hard to, when you go off on a tangent on product or anything else. It, it just enters into a more proving why you care, more proving why you're going to do the right thing, more proving. It's like just guide them in the sales process, like when to follow up. Like, hey, I don't want to be a pest, but I'm going to be persistent. Would next Friday be okay to follow up or the following Wednesday? Just guide them. You're, gonna t you're telling them what you're going to do. Hey, these are three options. If it was my mom's home, this is the shingle I'd install. I installed this other shingle, and it has black algae. This is why we installed this one now. Help them gain certainty. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, I love that. That makes sense. Um, well, we, we already kind of covered the production uh, process as well to a certain extent. So why don't we just go ahead and finish it out, just talking about the process in general. So we we went through... Um, with production part, production pieces, um, and, and what can and can't be automated there. 
and then all the way through the, the final invoice. And, and you can't quite automate that because you need to be able to check it, make sure it's right, make sure the change order information is on there, all that. Um, once that final invoice is out the door, what does your process look like after that? Do you guys do a lot of follow-up on those invoices? Yeah, so there's definitely um, – we're going to send out automations for five-star reviews and for invoices. We're And it's going to be per- – Pretty aggressive because they said they're going to write a review and they said they're going to pay their invoice. Again, they're busy. The people are busy. That's totally fine. We're not offended. You're not offended. Everyone knows if there's an issue, you need to tell us right away. And Mm -hmm. if we don't communicate with you, whether it's a phone call or an automation, there's no way for them to have a potentially tough conversation about, I don't like this, or there's a nail here, or my shrubs are damaged, or my... Landscape light. Okay, we're here. We're the ones communicating with you. Hey, we want to make sure you had a five-star experience before you pay the final invoice. We want to make sure that happened. That's in our automation. We're talking about five-star experience the whole time. And then at the very end, again, five-star. We want to make sure if there's anything that we can do that you you have a five-star experience before you pay the final invoice. And if they're not responding, the longer you go, the less likely you're getting paid. Or you're, and that messes everything up. So, yeah, for invoices and for five star reviews, Proline automations all day long. Yeah. And then, and then we definitely, I mean, for invoices, it's pretty crazy. Like Tisha, it, Tisha, <laughs> Tisha's so defensive of us because she's seeing the numbers. We meet every Thursday. Tisha and I do. She sends me the payables and the receivables and profit uh, P and L. And so we go over that. So she's seeing, she's reviewing this every single week, and so she's like defending the crap out of me and our, and the company. Like, oh no, I don't care if Kathleen already sent the request. I'm doing it too. Like, so we'll have two different proline numbers sending out automations or manual text. Hey, here's your invoice. Pay it. Essentially, it's nicer than that, but yeah, yeah. If you're not doing that, that's crazy. Yeah, because like it's not even about. It's not about if they're bad homeowners or bad people. They just need to be reminded a lot. Yep. I do. If there's something crazy that I'm like, I don't have my wallet with me right now. Right. Or if it's not easily, if you can't pay, like I will say this, eventually we'll get Apple Pay, I think, right? Some. Yeah, it's it's going to come at some point. So that's a, a great example of like, I think contractors will really like that part and Google Pay, Apple Pay, that kind of stuff because that's how I am. I'm... Like, oh, I can pay right now or I got to go find my wallet or whatever, you know, home equity line check I have. Right. It's so, it's, you got to make it easy. And the more reminder you, reminding you do, the quicker you're going to get paid. Yeah. Yep. That makes total sense. Um, so once the invoice is paid, then you're then you're asking for reviews, or you try are you asking for those simultaneously? Before or? we asked for before. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We asked before because we want them to be happy, and nobody likes to pay invoices, and so it works to our favor because they may be like, I forgot to s- transfer this money over, so we may have to wait a couple of days, but the the payment that we get that day is actually really meaningful. It's a five star review. Mm. So, like, I think that everyone should do that. I think you should ask for the five-star review. After you've got them complete, You, we send drone. That's one thing I, I kind of gl- didn't talk about. We always send completion photos, mm. and we try to do drone photos every time, depending on if it's dark or not yeah. uh, or how far the roof is away. If it's if it's dark and it, the roof is closed, so we'll come back the next day and do that. But we really want to do it the same day if we can. Yeah. Um, because they're like, oh, sweet. And we'll send a before and after, too. That's it's like a company cam before and after. And they're like, this is so awesome. Yeah. So they're pumped. There's like a, a slight spike in like, you know, dopamine hit. They're like, I got this. I, I just got value out of this. Yep. I know this is super expensive, $20,000, whatever. But I, I can see the difference. I'm really happy with it. And so you bring them up on the roof. They're never going to get on their roof. Most people won't but they're going to get to see what you did. Right. And and going back to sales and production and customer experience part of it, really important to send out selected company cam photos for the inspection, for definitely in the proposal. It's got to be in the proposal as well. 
explaining the problems and solutions. But then during production, we send out selected. We're taking around definitely over 100 pictures, but usually 150 pictures. And we're sending out around 6 to 10 photos to the customer throughout the day really important not to wait till the end of the day beginning of the day the tear off the rotten decking all that stuff is important but mm. then when you're installing ice and water shield around some flashing or doing or reflashing a chimney sending those pictures right when it's happening i don't care if they're home or not home sending like progress pictures increases everything Increases their experience, increases their likelihood of writing a review, increase, increases the chances of you getting paid quicker. Mm. Super, super important. And we can track it. We, we know which pictures in Proline Activity Feed. We know, we, we're sending it through there so the whole team knows, okay, I don't send this picture because, you know, inside sales did it or, Ka- or Kathleen did it or outside sales did it. You know what happened. Yep. And that just, that's huge because you're giving real value then. Yep. We told you we're going to do ice and water shield around this. We told you we're going to do lifetime pipe boots. Here it is. You can't check if you can't see it. Right. So it just, you're, you're being, it's just being a good neighbor. You're just being kind to them. You're saying what you, you, again, doing what you say you're going to do. Right. Right. And that's, uh, if you, if you can communicate that during the sales process, then, that's going to win you the sale and then following through during yeah. the production process is what's going to get you the review. That's exactly right. And it'll protect your profit too, because when you ask for a change order, guess what? You already sent pictures. You didn't say, Hey, we did 18 sheets of decking and here's your new roof. You ha- you said here, here's a spot. Here's a spot. Here's a spot. Here's a spot. And it is very important to do it while like it's already Lying in our, con- yeah, yeah, we're not going to get, we don't need to get signed off on this. It's already in our contract X amount of dollars per sheet. So there's no arguing with that, but it's really important not to do it at five thirty in the afternoon. Right. Cause then they're pissed. Right. Cause they don't believe you. And like, you just want to charge me whatever. No, here are the pictures. Here are the sheets that we installed. Here's the guys doing it. It's super important. And so then, it goes from literally, um, that's four star experience. They should not write a five star review at that point. If you if that's how you operate, hey, here's what we replaced. That's four star. That's not five. Mm-hmm. You have to do it during the process, and then there. Not only there, it's a five star experience if you're doing it during the replacement, but they want to write it then because they're they're they go from like questioning begrudgingly paying this to. I'm so thankful you're doing the right thing for my roof. It's yeah. literally, it's like two sides of the coin. Yep. Same process, same things are happening. Two different experiences. Yep. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Well, let's wrap up there. Um, great overview of your current process. Thanks for sharing. And uh, we'll see everybody next episode. Sounds good.